sister M there. Oh, there's Erin. Good morning, church. Testing, testing. Okay, I didn't expect a very healthy good morning because I see there are very few of us in church this morning. Testing, testing. testing. And, and when I look at the attendance today, I'm wondering whether I missed the memo that says COVID testing. is back. Because this is the amount of people we had in church with COVID, COVID AB. Yeah. So uh, we need to pray for our brothers and sisters testing. who are not coming testing. to church today. But we want to enter into a season of praise and worship, yes. because after all, yeah. Yannick, yeah. that's what we were created for, yeah. to praise and worship. And we were going to start with the song 524 that says, it is so sweet to trust in Jesus. Singing. Tales so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to trust upon his promise, just to know the sweet Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him. Following him, we want to consider is hymn number 308. You see, when you declare to the world that it is sweet to trust in Jesus, you'd make an effort to become holy his. Holy not in H-O, but in W-H. Holy his. Holy thine is the title of the next song. Number 75, seven, five. It is the wonder of sunset and evening. No. 
Church, just a quick announcement to all baptized members. We are having our business meeting next Sunday at 10.30 a.m. Thank you, church. All right, let's move to 473. 473 says, Nearer, my God, to thee. going to go to hymn number 526. We seem to be missing the first line of that hymn, which does cause a little bit of upsetness in that we don't know where to come in. 526, Because He Lives. Hundred and twenty six.
That's your desire to tell the world that he lives in song number 299 says and encourages us to turn our eyes upon Jesus because in turning our eyes upon Jesus like Peter when he had his eyes on Jesus he could walk on the water the minute he took his eyes off God that is when he began to sink so for you and I on this Christian lives that we're traveling on the road we're traveling on it is of utmost importance that we keep focus on Christ Jesus. So we're going to do 290. Keep your eyes upon Jesus. <coughs> Turn your eyes. going to invite the church to stand as we do our doxology this morning. Be still. Heavenly Father, Lord, for this wonderful Sabbath morning. We thank you, Father God, for our health. Thank you for good life. Thank you, Lord, for family and friends. Thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit amongst us. And Father God, as we come to worship you and praise you, I pray, Father God, that you will be accepted unto you. All this we pray in your holy name. Amen.
Let us take our Bibles and read in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37. I'm just going to read a few verses thereof. Ezekiel, chapter 37, 1 to 10. And I'll read in your hearing. The end of the Lord was upon me and brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley and it was full of bones. He caused me to pass among them round about, and behold, there were very many in the surface of the valley, and on the surface of the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Again he said to me, prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter you that you may come to life. I will put sinew on you, make flesh grow back on you, cover you with skin and put breath in you that you may come alive. And you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesy as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And I look, and behold, sinew were on them, and the flesh grew on, and then the flesh grew, and skin covered them. But there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breath on these slain, that they may come to life. Last verse says that, so I prophesy as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they came to life and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. The Lord always add a blessing to his word in his name. Amen. Amen. Our hymn of adoration and praise is hymn 316, Live Out Thy Life Within Me. Oh, 
as we seek the throne of grace. Our Father in heaven, we come with thankful hearts and grateful hearts this morning for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon sinful human beings. We thank you for life that has been ours and health and strength for wisdom, for knowledge, and all those good gifts that you've bestowed upon us. We praise you and thank you. But Father, we also come because we have sinned. We come because we have missed the mark and we have not reached the standard that you have set for each one of us. For we have transgressed your law, whether it was in thought or in deed. We ask that you would forgive us. Lord, we are a congregation of sinners but we are thankful for grace. We are thankful for the fact that you saw through time and had each one of us on your mind. We thank you for having stepped in so that we can be cleansed and washed clean and clothed with your righteousness. Father, we so easily give in to the temptation. And so we ask that we would be not as superficial as we are, but that we would dig deeper and deeper into your word so that your light can shine through each one of us. And so we come in repentance. We come because we have need of Jesus Christ the indwelling of his spirit in each of our lives. Help each one of us to take stock of our relationship with you. Help each one of us not to look at the other, but to look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We thank you that you will speak through your manservant today. May we be challenged to draw closer to you. And may we use the gifts that you have entrusted each one of us with to tell someone else of how faithful you have been in each of our lives and that your love surpasses each of our understanding. And so, help us. May your spirit speak today and draw each one of us into a better and closer and faithful relationship with Jesus Christ. We pray in your name. Amen. Good morning, the Church of the Living God. Happy Sabbath. Psalms chapter 4, verse 5 reads, Offer the right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. God only accepts worship that is offered to him in trust and spirit. 
although today we do not offer animal sacrifices, we can offer the sacrifice of our bodies under his authority and control. The sacrifice of general giving and the sacrifice of praise of praise. Ellen G. White writes, Come with all your offerings as God has blessed you. Show your gratitude to your creator, the giver of all your benefits, by a free will offering. Let none who are able to come empty handed, able to, who are able to come empty handed, this should be the joyful motivation of all our offerings. The deacons and the deaconesses will now collect offering. So I able to kneel, let us kneel in prayer. Our Father in heaven, 
Lord, thank you for the gift of, of giving. Thank you for the gift of life. Lord, we thank you that we can be able to give you, Lord, to give back the tithes and to give the offerings that lead the little we will have blessed us with. May it mean a lot to us. Be with us now, Lord, as we are going to, to listen to your word. May you please uh, let your word touch our hearts and get deep down into our hearts so that, Lord, we can remember it all in our entire life. I pray in your holy name. Amen. Can the children please come to the front? Okay, good morning, boys and girls. Good morning. Uh, today, my story is about a superhero. So, who can name some superheroes in the Bible? In the Bible for me. Mm, yes. Sarah? Oh, uh, you? Yes, Jesus was definitely a superhero. And you, baby? Yes. Oh, yes, we're getting there, we're getting there. Yes? Yes, that's right. So, one more. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are all superheroes. So, um, let me give you some more superheroes. There was Samson. Samson had super strength. And there was Moses. Remember? Yes, Moses could part the Red Sea. And there was even Queen Esther. Because she saved, yes, she saved her. Mm -hmm. And Esther saved her people from slavery. So now my story today is about superhero David. Okay, And David was a young shepherd boy. And he used to look after his sheep. And he loved Jesus very much. And during the day he would sing songs and write poems about his love for Jesus. And that love that he had for Jesus activated his superpowers. And his superpowers was courage, right? Courage. And that courage gave him the bravery he needed to even fight off the bears and the lions that tried to attack his sheep. And then... David's greatest adventure came when his father sent him to go take food to his brothers who were fighting the Philistines. And when he got there, he saw that everybody was afraid. And then he's like, guys, what's happening? Why are you so scared? And they said, oh, goodness, the Philistines has a giant with them. A big giant. Yes. And everybody was afraid to fight the giant. Even the king. Even the king was afraid to fight. But David said, I will fight the giant. I will fight him. And then with just one stone and a heart full of faith and courage, David defeated Goliath. And everybody was like, yay, David is our hero. And then, what? there's just three things that I need you to remember. That in our lives daily, we face 
giants as well. A giant can come in the form of somebody being nasty to you at school or bullying you, or a giant can come in the form of somebody tempting you to do something that you know is wrong, or a giant can even come in the form of when you feel nervous, when you must write a test, or if the teacher wants you to speak up in front of the class and you're feeling nervous, you must remember that is a form of a giant too. So there's just three things that we need to remember to overcome our giants. The first thing we need to remember is that God is always with you. Even though you can't see him, you know that he's always there. And the second thing is that when we have faith in God and that when we believe in God, that activates our superpowers, which is our courage, which enables us to accomplish anything. And then lastly, once our superpowers are activated and then with God on our side, no matter how big the Goliaths are that's in front of us, we can do anything. So remember that this week, okay? No matter how small you are and no matter how big your giant seems, with God on your side, you just remember to activate courage, your superpowers, and you can accomplish anything. Avery, will you please come pray for us? Can we close our eyes? Thank you, Jesus, that you've given us a lovely day. And thank you for the shorty. And that, when, and that whenever giants comes our way, we will always know that you will be with us, even though we don't see you. Amen. Amen. Bye-bye. Thank you. church members. Lovely to see your smiling faces and I really enjoyed listening to the praise and worship team this morning. It was nice being on the other side and just enjoying the, the wonderful singing and um, the way everyone sang so heartily. It is my happy privilege to welcome you to Christian Education Day. Now, for some of you that are aware of the GC calendar, you will know that it falls on the 25th of March. But we've brought it a bit forward this year um, because of certain factors. And it seems as though everything really was meant to be today because we were blessed with Riverside Primary School this morning when they presented Sabbath School. And I think we were all challenged as a church to get involved and support the school. And hopefully you were one of the lucky ones to get a packet of seedlings or you got a plant or one of the very fortunate ones to get a little pot of plum jam. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, you were not in Sabbath school <laughs> and you missed out. So we'd like to thank the Riverside Primary School for blessing us this morning with that wonderful encouraging, enthusiastic um, message that they left with all of us. And I would encourage all of you to be part of it. We are the closest church to Riverside Primary School. We are right opposite them. And we should always keep our, our neighbors close and dear to our hearts. And charity should really begin on our campus with them as our mission field. <coughs> sorry. I just want, before I welcome everyone, sorry, I'd also like to encourage you. You know it's the end of the month, and um, we're not taking up a special offering for the school today, but I'd like to ask you to please bring, pray about it, see how much you can manage, but bring a special offering for Riverside Primary School next week. We will receive it in little envelopes with the Riverside stamp on it. 
and then you can just drop it in the offering bags during divine service. We'd really appreciate that. Now let me welcome you. We'd like to welcome our regular members. Thank you so much for choosing Riverside as you faithfully do. It's lovely to see you in your places. And then to our visitors. Now I can see when I look over the congregation that not everyone has put their name in the book. So I'm going to read the names and then I'm also going to ask all our visitors to stand. So those that have written their names in the book is Veronica Ming. Could you stand please? Good, thank you. Um, I also believe it's your last Sabbath with us before you leave. May God go with you. Thank you so much for choosing us to be here for your last Sabbath. And you are from Johannesburg, so have, a safe tra um, tra have safe traveling mercies back. And then we'd like to welcome Kumbulani, Kumbulani Mbata from Orlando West. Thank you. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. We also have, um, is it Charlene and Clive Young? Charlene and Clive Young from Taiwan. Welcome to Riverside Church. Thank you for joining us. And is there anyone else besides my friend, Sean Lazarus? Is there anyone else that is a visitor today? Please stand. Welcome to Riverside. Anyone else? Amen. Thank you. I'd like to welcome Sean Lazarus to Riverside Church today. He happens to be visiting us just per chance um, on his trip from the U.S. We go way, way back. I think we were about 14 years old when we first met. <laughs> and the friendship has lasted. And um, he's with us for a few days and it just coincided that today is Christian Education Day, and he happens to be the principal of Toledo Junior Academy, which is a Seventh-day Adventist um, primary school in the USA. And I asked him just to share about five minutes of how the church supports the schools over there, and so that it can give us some encouragement and ideas as to how we can support our school. So I'd like to welcome you, Sean. Please feel welcome. And we're looking forward to hear what you have to say. Thank you. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Uh, first of all, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I wouldn't say speechless, but I didn't expect to be here as in speaking in front of you this morning. But when Cecily asked me to say something, and I said, what can I say? There's so much to say. And to be honest, I love to talk. So I'm hoping the five minutes is going to be enough. But nonetheless, yeah, I'm happy to be here. I'm so glad that I could spend some time with Cecily and her sister Gloria as well, Ian and the kids. And I was talking to her not to, I think it was on Thursday, uh, Wednesday, and I said, do you know this guy? I actually remember the sister's name. Uh, Felix, well, the last name is Felix, the first name is Rebecca, and she said, yes, yeah. the brother's name, I think Martin or something, she said, David Martin, she said, yes, and she said, oh, I just spoke to his wife, and I'm so glad that actually today I got to see him, and we've met in Young Life, I think it was 89, and you know, just to rekindle some friendship after all these years, but nonetheless, I'm glad here, yeah? glad to be here, and to speak a little bit about, you know, Christian education and kind of what's happening with us. I was very impressed this morning, well, yesterday when I came and visited Riverside um, Primary, and just to look what's going on and all of that, and uh, I think you guys have a very good uh, representative that speak highly of the needs of the school, and that is Miss Barchi, is I think, am I pronouncing correct, right? So she was taking me around, showing me what the needs are of the school, and so I took some pictures because I think in the U.S., all of our schools have always helped other schools or do things that are mission required, you know, community service. And I said, well, maybe my school can adopt Riverside and probably we could raise some funds to help with the flooring or something of that sort. And I remember bringing some of my high school students over to South Africa to help with the, uh, some mission work. You know, we actually did a school up, painted, 
jungle gym and all of that stuff. So it's always part of the mission work with us there. But one of the things that stands out is when the church gets involved. And I said, Cecily, you guys need to have a work bee. And she said, what's the work bee? So the work bee is usually uh, when the church comes together to support the school, to clean the school before it starts and when it ends, you know, the school year, to get involved. Because I will tell you that, that the greatest mission for the church, for numbers to increase, is through the primary school. Because I do believe, and I stand under correction here, that you'll have mostly not yet Adventist kids attending the school, right? And that's a mission field right there. And if we are complacent being just members in the church and not being part of the school, that's not going to help at all. And that's when God starts to bring in people from outside to witness to these children. And personally, you guys need to get involved. You know, the fact that you guys, uh, they started a garden program, and that's what I've actually instituted in my schools. We have a kindergarten forest program. That's something that's new, that's now sweeping the U.S. schools. Most of our schools either project-based learning or something to that effect. So we have a kindergarten forest program where the kids are mostly outside, but they do learn the core classes, you know, English and math and science and social studies. And then for the grades one through eight, we have an outdoor learning program giving a balance to the kids, helping them to understand what is. But the garden is actually helped and maintained by members of the church. They'll come in, volunteers that will come in, help the kids, help to grow and all of that. So those are some of the things that you guys could actually do to help the school. And then we can fill the pews that are in front here with these children because I believe through the hearts of the children, we will, we will definitely meet the needs of the parents who are listening and wanting to know more about God. And those are some of the things that we actually do, getting the church involved to be volunteers, coming in to read. And I do believe that the schools will probably do a background check. You know, that's required in the U.S. And you guys will probably do that because to work with children, that's what's usually needed. And to come in as reading, you know, listen to the kids read, be volunteers, aides, because we all know that teachers are one of the lowest paid people who should have been the highest paid, right? And this is across all over. And I know in U.S. that's what it is. So the thing is, you know, the church needs to get more involved with the school to support the school. When there's bake sales and they're looking for people to help bake things, you know, that's where you come in. What can I do? Um, out in front, I know Ms. Jul Julius put some plants out there. Take them, great, but to give a donation would be great, you know, for what she's done. Because those little pennies that you give towards the school is going to help the school grow. A relationship with the students to go in there to pray with the teachers. Because teachers are, of course, ministers as well. But at the same time, they need to be nurtured. And if you can go in to the school and tell the teachers, I'd like to pray for you, that makes such a big difference to them knowing that you care. And so I, I, I'm not sure whether the school, I don't think you'll have a board, a school board and a church board. That's what we have in all of our school. We have a school board and a church board. And we usually get them involved. The board members are involved and instrumental in the school, coming in, being part of the program. And so that's what needs to help the growth and the nurturing of the school. And you guys can play an important part. And I'm, I'm hoping, I don't know whether our students here attend the school next door. And that should be one of the greatest factors. Because Christian education tops everything and above. I know some of us want our kids to go to affluent school because they offer this and that. But at the same time, we need to support our schools. And that's what, you know, my little... Uh, message, not message, but information of what's happening with us. We encourage our students from the church to attend our school. We encourage the parents to be part of the program that's happening there. And, you know, getting involved in community service, the church as well as the school coming together. So I pray that over the years, you know, moving forward and if the Lord's will for us to come again, to visit and to see and to hear that, hey, you know what, Riverside Church is actually helping a great deal with the school. The numbers, the enrollment has increased. The marketing part has, you know, went up. Members from the church have become more like development people doing fundraising for the school. 
It is difficult, I know, in South Africa, but at the same time, there's still money out there that we can, you know, request and get to help the school. Because, again, Christian education is something that means and makes a difference in the lives of our families as well as the children. So thank you for the opportunity that I could share at this time. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, Sean. I hope that we were encouraged and we can see where we can perhaps fit into some of the things that um, Sean mentioned. I'd like to call on Trezé to please um, come and favor us with a special item. Thank you. After which Elder Wesley will both welcome and introduce our new pastor. Sorry, I might have not included you in the major welcome, but please feel welcome from my side. Thank you. Who taught the sun where to stand in the morning? And who told the ocean you can only come this far? And who showed the moon where to hide till evening? Whose words alone can catch a falling star? Well, I testify that this life within me cries I know my Redeemer lives the very same God that spins things in orbit Runs to the weary, the worn and the weak. And those same gentle hands that hold me when I'm broken. That conquer death to give me victory. Well, I... Testify that this life within me cries, I know my Redeemer, he lives to take away my shame, and he lives forever. For my sin was the precious life he gave, but now he's alive and there's an empty grave. Well, I know my Redeemer, he lives. I know. Testify that this life within me cries, I know, my Redeemer, I know, my Redeemer, He lives, I know, my Redeemer, He lives, I know that I know that I know that I know that I know, my Redeemer, 
we'd like to say thank you for that song and reminding us that there is a Redeemer who lives. It is my privilege to welcome a young man to the sacred desk. This is the new pastor, Pastor Britt. He has served for the past two terms in the Northern Cape District. And so today, we want to welcome him to Riverside formally, uh, taking our divine service. May you enjoy and be challenged by the message that the pastor will bring to us. Welcome, sir. Good morning, church. No, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. You know, when it comes to Sabbath mornings, you don't want to be in your bed. You would like to be in the church of God because you know that the presence of the Holy Spirit is here. And, you know, I don't know whether it's the angels that are also visiting us when we have service here. But I believe that uh, they will come down here and sit, you know, and uh, I usually think that, you know, Adventists are very funny people. They will always populate the seats at the back and uh, open spaces, and angels would say that, no, let us sit in front here, because they don't want to hear what we should hear. But uh, nevertheless, thank you for uh, inviting me, or rather welcoming here, uh, Elder West and uh, the board. Uh, I'm happy to be here, and I know that uh, my family will join me soon. Uh, I am from Kimberley. You will hear the Africans will just come through and forgive me for that. Um, so that's me. Um, married, I think. Two kids, yeah. Yeah, there are two. There are two kids, a boy and a girl, and still the same wife for over many, many years. And we thank God for that. Um, yeah, I am really grateful to be here at Riverside and in the district of Peninsula 3, uh, various churches that, we, that I'll be serving around here. But today, uh, let us jump into the business of the day. And the text that I've read this morning, it is something, it's a text that really challenges the, the house of God. And uh, you know, sometimes when you had to speak out and uh, say what God is laid on your heart, it seems that you will say that, you know what, uh, 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 but God says that you just give it as I have written it, and you don't need to worry. And the one who points a finger at you, he'll point a finger to me. And uh, I thank God for his love and his kindness. Our topic or this course this morning is, can these bones live again? And we believe that when, uh, or rather we know when COVID-19 came around, Churches were closed around the globe, and uh, some of our people didn't come back. Some of them died and all that kind of thing. And uh, we see that uh, there was sort of a trend where some of the people just get drowsy, and they just slumber and sleep. And uh, this morning, uh, the Lord is just reminding us again in the book of uh, Ezekiel, chapter 37, 1 to 10, where he spoke with the prophet Ezekiel, in terms of the state of Israel. Remember, the vision is about Israel and God's nation. Now, he was transported to a valley populated with a lot of bones, and uh, the bones were not just bones, but it was, they were very dry, says the word of God. And, uh, you know, and he had to stand there in the middle of this valley and look at it. But this prophet, he was a real leader with a backbone, and his conviction was, in other words, he knew God. He had a relationship with God. This is what this man was all about. And God raised this, this prophet to come and speak with a very difficult people. And God also warned Ezekiel, that he will speak with a stubborn people. 
And you know what, uh, many of us as leaders, when the moment you speak with a stubborn nation, you will get them, then they will reevaluate their position as a leader of that organization and say that, I think I must step back. But God has given this man power and said that you continue to do what I called you to do. So Ezekiel chose to remain and stay true to his conviction. In other words, I am a child of God. Now, God is a God who is long-suffering. He's a God who is love and kind and And you know, you you can name all those names, and this is what God is. And God, he warns his his, 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 his prophet in Isaiah 2, verses 5, he says, as for them, that was the text says in verses 5, as for them, whether they listened or not, for they are a rebellious house. They will know that a prophet has been among them. And, and, and God is speaking with us this morning, and he says that uh, whether they listen or not, point is that the word of God, it will go out and will never return void unto him. He will always do what he is, um, uh, we will always accomplish what he is intending it to be. Now, our text this morning talks about bones. Now, I'm not a doctor, it might be doctors amongst us here. And so I'm not going to dig into the bones, what is a bone and how a bone looks like and what is the significance of a bone. But uh, I'm just going to go to the text where the Lord says in verses 3, he said to, the, to this prophet, son of man, can these bones live? And he gave a very interesting uh, answer and he said that, oh God, you know. Now, why would God ask such a question whereas he knows the answer? Because to me, it's a rhetorical question that you are asking, yet you know everything as God. But the prophet placed his faith completely in the living God. In other words, he knows that I need to trust God whatever he says to him. But not only we would have said, Brits would have said that, no, 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 uh, I don't think as I look at these bones here, there's no way that they will ever live again. Um, but we serve a God who is omniscient, all-knowing, all-wise. He is a God who is all-powerful, omnipotent. He is a God who understands everything that we need to know because he is God. Now, I found this code on the internet, and it, it reads here, it says that if you prick us, do we not bleed? If you tickle us, do we not laugh? If you poison us, do we not die? In other words, what, what the, the, the writer is saying here is that all these things, it's obvious. You, your young people will say that, duh, if you prick me, I will Blood will come out me, and if you tickle me, yes, I will laugh. So, so, so the question that uh, is here this morning, God asked this question to Ezekiel, that can these bones live again? And uh, the prophet answered with conviction. The prophet answered because of the relationship that he has with God. You know, you need to have an experience with God. You cannot just answer and you don't know him. If he have led you through uh, the desert, if he have led you through the valley of the shadow of death, you will know that now this is what God wants me to answer and because I've got a relationship with him. The Bible teaches us that God is able to do anything at the right time. Nothing will stop him. Nothing can come in front of him. He is God. And by the way, he made the heavens and the earth, including us as human beings. Now, the classic story of Abram and uh, and Sarah, when we look at this old bone story of, of the Israelites, and we see also the question that was posed to Ezekiel, we see the story of of Abram and Sarah. Uh, God works against nature. You know, there are certain laws in nature that you can't stop. 
If something is like that, it will not, it will remain like that. And God allowed something that is unusual in society. When a woman reached her age of uh, 60, 70, 80, 90, then uh, you don't expect any child from that person. Praise God. Amen. And, 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 and you know, and, and they were at that stage whereby they said to themselves that, you know, that baby, it's okay. Let us accept it the way we, we are. There's no way that we will have a boy in our house. There's no way that we'll have a child in our house. A woman's peak of reproduction years is between your 20s and your 30s, and the moment it goes over to your 40s and your 50s, chances for that person to be pregnant is very slim. Now, we are speaking with a man here who got faith in God when God said to him that he must go to a, a place which he didn't know of. And he just took everything of his and he went. But the, the point here is this morning is that God is still in the business of reuniting his people. God is still in the business of giving strength to his people. But God is faithful and just to give us the desires of our hearts. You know, um, this man, Sarah and, and, uh, and, and Abram, they were really advanced in their age, and, and in their age, and they knew that there's no way that we will have a baby. But listen what the Word of God says here. And I think maybe Ezekiel also tapped into that uh, to understand that uh, uh, when the Word of God said, let there be light, and light was there, praise God. And uh, we will know that all these things happen with a reason. And in Genesis 18, verses 14, the Word of God says here, is anything too difficult for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you. At this time next year, and Sarah will have a son. In other words, not and Sarah will have a child, because it can be a girl or a boy. But God is so particular, he is so straightforward. In other words, when he says something, it will be done. In other words, he is not a man that he should lie. When he says something and he will not do it, he always comes through for his children. In other words, when Ezekiel looked at these bones and he knew that there's nothing too difficult for my God to let these bones can stand up and be alive again. How he will do it, I don't know but you've got a power to do it. I think of Abram also answered the same question, uh, answer there, maybe give the same answer. He said, Lord, you know whether I will have a baby or not. But, but as I'm looking at my wife and as I'm looking at myself, there is no way. By the way, in society, it's not the norm. But God changed things. Because in the life, in our lives, brothers and sisters, we must know when we seek the Lord first in our lives, Matthew 6, verses 33, I think, it's in the Bible, it says that, seek ye first the kingdom of God and God's righteousness, and God will add all these other things unto you. In other words, if I believe in him, whether he comes through now or later, point is that he is God, and he will come through for us. Now, you know, get, you get doctors and all these people, they will tell you that there's no way when a lady is over the 80s that he will or she will get a child. No, no, no. It can't happen. But with God, all things are possible because this is what God does. He is the architect of the law of nature. He instituted the laws of nature. In other words, in the Bible, in Matthew 19, 26, the Bible reads here that with people, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. In other words, these bones can be as white as they are. These bones can be lifeless as they are. But with God, all things are possible. And I believe in a God who is able to do things in his own gentle way. Brothers and sisters, it doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what your life is right now. You might feel like that dead bone. You might feel that there's no way that I grow in this church. But I need to tell you that keep on praying for the Holy Spirit. God is in his holy temple because it's only there that you can have a, a relationship with him 
and build that relationship. God is not man. He had made us in his, in his own image. In other words, when, when we look at us, when you look yourself in the mirror, you see the image of God, nothing else. We know that previously they told us that we are from certain animals, but I, I can't see that happening because God had created all humanity. Genesis 1 verse 26 says, verses 27 says, God created man in his own image. These bones were there in the valley. And remember those head bones and neck bones and foot bones and all the kinds of bones, those bones were created by God himself. And as he had created man out of the dust of the earth, God can also do something which man cannot do. And this is why Ezekiel, when he maybe read this text and said that he, 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 he made man in his own image, in the image of God, he created him male and female. In other words, he created us as his children. Brothers and sisters, uh, as Ezekiel stood in the middle of a valley full of dry bones, and he was asked the question, can these bones live again? And when I look at myself and at the congregation this morning, many times in life we feel so hopeless. We feel that the nothing is working out for us. The church is not growing. Our children are not in the church. My, even my devotional life at my home, it's not happening. Things are not in place. There are times when we feel so discouraged and even disappointed in ourselves and say that, where did I fail in life? Feeling like a dry bone and feeling lonely, one-sided, and nobody is looking at you. Nobody sees the potential in you, but we've got a God who looks at the valley and he sees dry bones and says that there is a potential that these bones can live again. Remember, this was a vision which the Lord has uh, given this young man. And he knew that uh, the Lord has a plan here. The Lord already told him, I think in verses 14, you will read it in your, in your time, where he talks about that, I want to bring my spirit on you again. Could it be that God is asking the same question today, brothers and sisters, can your light shine again? Can we sing that song again, that, that this little light of mine? Can we sing that song again? You know, sometimes we leave all these beautiful songs that uh, count your blessings, name them one by one. We don't sing them anymore because it seems that we've got too many blessings nowadays. And God is saying to his people this morning that can your light shine again? Matthew 5 uh, verse 16 says that, uh, let your light so shine and so that people may see the good works in you and glorify our God is in heaven. He wants you to, to shine, not in the church only, not in your house only, but even in society, at your workplace, your brothers and your sisters, can they see God in you? Can they see, as Jesus put it, he said that, I am the light of the world. Can we be lights? Can we shine for Jesus? And this is what the Lord wants us to do. Jesus is able to change your condition so that your light can shine for Jesus. Jesus is looking at us this morning, brothers and sisters, and he says that he is able to do that for us. You know, in the, in the case of Lazarus, Martha and Mary's brother who died, and you know what, the people were laughing at Jesus and he was coming close by and said that, what is he going to do here? Because everything is, it's not going to work four days in the grave. But you know what, we're serving a God who understands. You know, he does not understand just the beginning, but he also understands where the future will end. And that's why he stood in front of Martha and Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. Brothers and sisters, you know, sometimes we need to spend time with the Lord. 
There's a text in the Bible, Matthew 6, 6. He says that go into, open the door, go into your inner room and shut the door and speak with your God who is in heaven. He will give you the answers. You need to put your dipstick in and pull it out and see that how far is your oil? In other words, is there enough oil in your tank? Remember the story of Matthew 25 of the 10 virgins. We, we remember that, that all of them had oil, but there came a time that your oil ran dry. And brothers and sisters, when you come to the door and knock, I've been at the church, my Lord. I've been giving out food all the time. I've been visiting members all the time. Then the Lord says that I don't know you because you don't have a relationship with me. He says that he is the resurrection and the life. These bones can live again. Riverside, you can live again. Riverside, the glory that you had before can come up there again. And I believe that there are some of our folk who are not here anymore who maybe started this church. They, they, if they could live in their graves, they will turn around and say that what is happening here? Because we know that when we fall away, there was a standard of serving God. But brothers and sisters, please take note what God is saying today because he knows our struggles and he is about to make a change in your life. God is about to make a change in your life because in his word, he says in Jeremiah 32, 27, he said that, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh, is anything too difficult for me? And even if you feel that you cannot lead out a Sabbath school, you cannot have a lesson study, and, and, and you feel that you cannot even preach, neither can you sing like the, the lady who sang here for us, that, and you ask the Lord, what is my talent? Is there a gift for me as well? The Lord will tell you that uh, hospitality is there. I know that you are a very hospitable person, but, but what is that? Why did you not use it anymore? Is there anything too difficult for the Lord to do? There might be somebody here this morning and say that, you know what, I've been attending this church, but it seems that I've never met Christ in my life. The Lord said there is always hope. And I must tell you, brothers and sisters, in Christ Jesus, there is always hope because he says in his word that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father but by me. You've got to start with me, as Jesus says, that I am the bridge to the Father. I am the bridge to eternal life. Eternal life starts with me. For God so loved the world that he gave Jesus so that none of us who are sitting here this morning should die as a dry bone, but says that, Lord, I want to be in heaven one day. And he is able to make it possible for you because with God all things are possible. The prophet encourages us also today, today to give us the answer so that we can also say that, oh Lord God, you know how you can change me. Some of us are from various residences or places where we stay. And you know, not all of us are Adventists at our, our homes, our families. And when you go back to the lion's den this afternoon, the TV will be playing. Uh, there will be a lot of noise. There will be a lot of uh, words that you are not uh, want to hear because it is the Sabbath day. And you have to live in that. And where is those days when Sabbath keeping was like, we go back home and we return and come and learn about God in the afternoon as well? Where are those days? And as I said, brothers and sisters, the church need to wake up because God is calling upon his church this morning. And he said that, my church, you need to wake up. I am coming again, and I can only come and fetch those who are ready for my coming. Standing in the middle of so many very dry bones, it is a scary scene. I can see the prophet of God standing there, and you know what? And as the bones had to move, and you know, you'll see in the text the way he talks about, and the bones had to move to its rightful bone. And I think there was a song that we used to sing. 
uh, neck bony and what bone and everything. You, you remember that, Elder Ronnie, that we used to sing that song, and, and, you know, and, and, and you didn't take notice of it, but now we understand that you need to have a connection with God. Brothers and sisters, family and friends, I need to tell you that uh, uh, we need to have a relationship and experience with the Lord. And then when such questions comes to us, then we will be able to deal with it in a faithful way. You know, I, I think also the man of God, he needed to think deep here. And as it is uh, recorded in Hebrews 11 verses 1, he says that now faith is the assurance of things hoped for. The conviction of things not seen. He has never seen a whole lot of bones come to life again. He has never seen that, but a question was posed to him that can these bones live again? And we know that God can do anything. When he says that he will do something, we will come, he will come up with a plan and say, that, you know, let us reverse these things. You remember the text of Matthew 6, 33, uh, which says that seek ye first the kingdom of God. You know what we do as Christians, as those ones who follow Christ, we go and look for the things that needs to be added to our lives. And the moment we have those things, then we come to the Lord and we want to serve Him. And the, you know what the Lord says? That go and sell everything. You remember the young ruler? Go and sell everything and come follow me. And how bad and how sad it will be when you turn around and you will not be able to sell all what you have. So the best thing is that allow him to add these things to your life. So, so when you have them and you be like a Job and you lost everything in a day, and then you can still say that, I know that my Redeemer lover. I know that he can add it, double, and I know, and even if, like the three Hebrew boys said, that they stood in front of a burning furnace, and they stood there, and they asked themselves that, you know what, even if this God of us does not deliver us from here, we will not worship this image. Brothers and sisters, it's not always the good things. It's not always the, the, you know, those beautiful times when God protects us. It is always, also sometimes when things are really going bad in your family. When things are going bad where you know that uh, things are not good at all. Then God steps in for you. Now, something that I also picked up in the text, in this pericope, it, it, it says here to... to to the prophet, you must tell them the bones now, hear the word of the Lord. And that was really standing out for me. And verses 4, it says, again he said to me, prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Many times we don't listen to the Lord. Many times we have these quick prayers, da, 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 amen, and there we go that now the Lord will protect us. And he's so faithful and he really, he still protects us. Do we spend time after your prayer, after your devotional life, where you just sit and listen to the voice of God? I'm not saying that you will hear, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. I don't think you will hear that, but there will be a voice speaking in your heart. If you listen carefully, I will dry bones hear the word of the Lord. And Ezekiel had to listen carefully to the voice of God in order to prophesy or the, the, the exact words. Don't turn around. It's like Moses when he was with God on the mountain. God said to him that do it exactly as I've shown you. Many times we turn, we try those shortcuts. And, no, no, God is a God who are not, you, you can't intimidate him. Nobody can intimidate him. You just speak the word as it is. And he had to listen very carefully because he need to make, choose the right words and the words of God. Fortunately, God had warned Ezekiel, my people will not listen to you. They are stubborn nation. 
Therefore, the dry bones represent the people of their spirituality uh, just had gone down and down. In other words, the, the material things is now better, is better than God. It's, it's first the material, it's first my house, my family, and then, oh, hey, let us go to church. But God says that I need to, want, I want to take first place in your life. God is about to revive his church again. And he is in the business to do that, brothers and sisters. Maybe some of us had fell into a deep slumber. And, you know, God wants to revive his church through the presence of the Holy Spirit. Because many times we want to be popular with, uh, amongst us or with people. And therefore we preach to people what they want to hear. Remember the word of God says, uh, Paul says that in the last days they will choose their preachers. And they will also tell them what to preach. In other words, to, just, just to smooth them, just to give them the beautiful words, they must go under that, that wow, that was powerful. But it did God work in your life? Is your life changed? Do you see that the coming of the Lord is near? You know, Bible says in, I think it's in Revelation 1, it says that every eye shall see him when he comes on the clouds of heaven. By the time it will be too late, now is the time. As the word of God teaches us, brothers and sisters, yeah, in the last days, we will get all these things. People will be lovers of money, lovers of themselves, but the Lord is pleading with his church this morning. And he said, the church, I'm here this morning, and I want to speak with you alone. Uh, leave the rest of the people. You know, sometimes we, we tend to be in that group, and we think that when you are in that group, uh, the Lord will also bless you. Yes, he will bless you, but what is your relationship with God? The hope and prayer of the church should be that God will put his spirit in us again. We need to pray more, brothers and sisters. We need to pray more. We need to spend the whole night through with prayer. You know, sometimes when we think of gangsterism, or now that it is too dangerous, that the point is that when we focus uh, our attention on those things, we will miss heaven. In fact, God is at work calling his people back to himself, bringing new life in their churches. And when we can look around, not just in this district, around the world, that we see that the churches are just running dry. And you ask yourself that, where are God's children? And the Word of God teaches us here this morning, brothers and sisters, I'm coming to the conclusion of this sermon. In Luke 10, verses 2, it says that, and he was saying to them, to, the, to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, beseech the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Now, if the valley is full of dead bones, there will not be laborers to do the work of God. And Jesus is, is speaking with us here this morning. He said that uh, there is a lot of work outside there. You know, you, charity begins at home. Start with your own brother. Start with your own mother, your own family. Begin with them. Let them see God in you. You know, you don't need to stand on the roof and say that, you know what, I'm an Adventist. They need to see Adventism in your life. They must be able to see that. The 50 years that I've been, been in this church, there are results that can show that I am a child of God. There is something that is happening in my life. Laborers are few. Laborers don't want to do the work of God. Laborers are not prepared to stand in. Laborers are lazy. Laborers are not seen at all. Laborers say no to God's work. God is in the business to revive men and women to go into his harvest. Brothers and sisters, family and friends, there are a few who have listened to the word of the Lord. In Matthew 28, where he says that, Go ye therefore 
and make disciples. There are just a few that have listened to that word and said, I will go because you have called me. Brothers and sisters, I, I'm, the Lord is pleading with us, but there, will, there are still many of us who need to stand up and get involved in the harvest of the Lord. And you know that, just get in. You know what? There's no more knees that are paining. There's no more aching of bags. But it is that, Lord, you can strengthen me. Word of God in Isaiah 40, 31, it says that those who wait upon the Lord, he will renew their strength. If you feel that you are weak, come to the Lord, he says, that, and I will renew your strength so that you can mount up like eagles. You know, to do God's work. Because God is looking for men and women to come and do his work. I'm not going to go into verses 7 and 8. Uh, you know, this is where the bones had come together, where the prophet was prophesying, and all the bones, and, you know, he, he could have maybe stood on top of one of the bones, and maybe the bone would say that, hey, you are stepping on top of me. I need to move over to the south side. And the other bone is rolling behind him, and he's, you know, the bones are just rolling, and flesh is just covering the bones, and all those things. You know what? And you know, sometimes we as leaders, we tend to step on others and not giving them an opportunity also to do something in the church. Not be able to, you know, that, that, that bone is underneath Ezekiel's feet, and maybe the bone is just, you know, move him out of under his feet so that he can get to where he needs to get to. Brothers and sisters, family and friends, the bones came together, the head bone rolled over to the right body, and you know that bodies were in place and the skeletons were, were just covered with flesh and skin. But there was one thing that was needed in those skeletons and that was the breath. And when we look in Genesis, we see that when Adam was formed and he was laying there and God looked at him and you know what, and it seems to me uh, when God looked at him, he said that, oh, by the way, he will not stand up. I need to put myself in him. And you know that that is how it works. God needs to have himself in us in order for us to stand up and do his work. We can look good and healthy in the church, but if the Holy Spirit is not in us to guide, to teach, and to lead us into all truth, we are like that, those bones, that, that valley of, full of dry bones. So God commanded the prophet to prophesy on the breath so that the breath can come into these skeletons so that uh, these bodies can have life and stand up. Verses 10 says, So I prophesy as he commanded me and, he, and the breath came into them and they came to life and stood on their feet an exceedingly great army. You know what we can do? as a church. Each one teach one. Each one bring one. Then we will have another church next door. Then we, but, but the point is that we got to be intentional to do that. Because it's, it's for me, you know, we must have a visitor's day. And the one who enters that gate without the visitor, they must have a visitor and a Praise God. So, so, so that something needs to happen so that the Lord can bless us in a very special way. You know, when I look at the text where God has created Adam and Eve, the Bible says in Genesis 2, 7, then the Lord God formed man of the dust from the ground and breathed into his nostril the breath of life and man became a loving being. It's only when he is in our lives. It's only when he has a place in our lives. This is when we will stand up and have the desire to do God's work. You know, there's a text in the Bible in Psalms, I think it's 37, this is 4. He said that, uh, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. 
in Afrikaans hier wil sê, verlustig jou in die Heere, en hy sal jou gee die begeertes van jou hart, and that is what God want to do for his people, he want to give it to you, but you need to work with him, this is what he want us to do, that he wants to work with us, brothers and sisters, and he says that, I'm about to give you the Holy Spirit. He says in Luke 11, 13, he said that we as, 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 as parents, we can give good gifts to our, our children. But and then the text says, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? If you don't ask, you don't get. You got to ask God that, Lord, I need the Holy Spirit in my life. We need to ask the Holy Spirit and our heavenly Father will give him to us so that he can guide us and lead us into all truth. You know, the, even the apostles in Acts 13, 52 says that, and the disciples were continually, listen to this, continually filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit must not be a, no, no, no. It must always be with us because you are a disciple of God spreading the gospel. Have a little booklet in your pocket when you go to your workplace. Just don't take the whole box with you. Just take one. Pray about that little book. Ask the Lord, show me the right person so that I may be able to share it with him. But you also got to read that book because that person will go to heaven and you will remain behind. Because there might be valuable stuff that you need to understand what God is saying to his people. Brothers and sisters, I need to stop here, yeah, but, but there is so much in the Bible. And you know what? When we look at these bones and, and what Ezekiel had to see, then we need to bring it close to home so that we understand. Jesus said to his disciples, it's to your advantage that I go away. Because if I don't go, uh, John 16, verse 7, and he said that, for I do not go away. Uh, if I do not go away, he said that, the helper will not come to you, but if I go, I will send him to you. He's looking for you. But what are you saying this morning? Are you listening to the word of God as the Bible says? Or are you just here this morning? God is, Jesus is saying to his disciples in John 15, 7, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. What are you asking this morning? Is it the Holy Spirit? Or is it for other things? Is it for something that you, maybe you ask the Lord, Lord, bring my child home because, but, but my child went out of the house because of my attitude towards my family, my wife, and even my own child. That's why they left. But that if I ask the Lord, Lord, start with me. So that when you start with me, you work towards me, you work in me, you work through me to my children and to my family. That is when things will start working. We got to buy, Jesus said that I must be in you. And somebody may say this morning that, Lord, I want to be in you. And as I come to the end, uh, John 15, 4 says that abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. He's looking for branches who are about to die. So that when he crafts you into the vine, that you will be able to get the nutrients and everything that comes from the, from the roots so that you can be able to grow and there may be fruit on those branches. He's looking for you this morning. He's calling upon you this morning. And he said, my child, it is not too late. Once upon a time, the president of America, uh, the former president, Barack Obama, he said these words, and I quote, yes, you can. But I want to say, uh, say to the church this morning, yes, we can. And yes, you can for your own and say that, Lord, come, start with me. But then the Lord says that you will not be able to do it alone. In Matthew 11, 28, he said that, come to me, all who are 
weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Maybe, as the text will say, that be still and know that I'm God. Maybe we run too much around and want to fix everything else, but we are not fixed with God. And God says that, my child, the dry bone, as you perceive you, you to be, I want to fix you. I want to help you. I want to give you rest so that you will rest in me. Now, I need to read this text, and this is very important. This is for the church, and this is for those ones who are Adventists, Catholic Adventists, Methodist Adventists, and here Adventists. Adventist means what? Amen. Praise God. So, so they're also waiting for the Lord, so we cannot count them out. Praise God. Now, in the New Jerusalem, there will be another question. And the question is, who are they and where have they come from? Revelation 7, 13, 17 says that, then one of the elders answered, saying to me, These who are clothed in the white robes, who are they? And where have they come from? I said to him, My Lord, you know. There they come that phrase out the gate. And he said to me, These are the ones who have come out of great tribulation, and they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For this reason, they are before the throne of God, and they serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will spread his tab tabernacle over them. They will hunger no more, praise God. No thirst anymore. No thirst anymore. Nor will, they, will the sun beat down on them. No any heat. I like verse 17. For the lamp in the center of the throne will be their shepherd. It's no more Ezekiel who stands in the center of the valley, but it's now the lamp of God who stands in the center of the throne who will be our shepherd and will guide them to springs of loving water. And God will wipe every tear from their eyes. Brothers and sisters, family and friends, do you want to be there one day when the role is called and names are being called? And, uh, you know, when it's open, will your name be there? Because the Word of God says that only the names in the book of the Lamb will be able to enter with him. Give him a chance in your life. It doesn't matter how your situation looks like, but he is able to change it for the better. God bless. Amen. Thank you, Thank you Pastor Brits, for that inspiring message this morning. May the message that we take with us this week encourage us to revive Ask God to help us revive those, those um, dead bones. We um, also thank Candice for taking the children's story this morning. May we remember that the God that dwells within us is greater than any giant that we will come across before us. Let's close our service by um, first listening to our special item by Trezé. We'd like to call you up again, and then we will sing the closing hymn, the first and last verses only. Thank you. God, when I, in awesome wonder, can 
consider all the worlds thy hand hath made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. God, his son not sparing, sent him to die. I scarce can take it in that on that cross my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shouts of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart, then I shall bow in humble and then proclaim my God how great thou art then sings my soul my Savior God to thee how great thou art how great sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art, how great thou art. Shall we stand and sing hymn 412?
Thank you. The first and last stanzas. Sometimes we, we want to close our eyes and go home, and which is good. But there might be somebody in the audience who said that if it happened that I get a chance just to say that, pray for me. I want to do that for, for that person. Maybe there's somebody maybe who said that, you know, the next baptism when it comes around, don't leave me out. I want to be there. I want to be present in that baptism. And I want to pray with you. Is there somebody who would like to pray with me this morning? And say that, Lord, be with my family. Be with my friends. And be with myself. And start with myself. So that whatever dryness that I have in my life, that you will be the one who deal with it. We will pray together. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we cannot help ourselves this morning. We stand in front of a holy God. We are so sinful, Lord. Our minds is already running around thinking all other things, but not the throne of grace. And I pray, Father God, that you will help us through the presence of the Holy Spirit to direct our, main, our minds to the throne of grace. This is where we will find healing. This is where we will find comfort, my Father. And this is where you will tell us that don't be afraid. I am with you. And I pray for your church here this morning, Father God. If we have not listened to your word this morning, help us, Lord, as we turn back home, that we will have a moment of silence and meditate upon your word. And I pray that you will strengthen your, your church. Be with the leadership of this church, Father God, and even, even every member of this church, that we will come to a point and know that when we are in your presence, you are here with us. 
And therefore, we would like to think of your coming also one day, that, Lord, our coming here must not be in vain, that when you call that row, that our names also be found in the book of life. Thank you once again for being with us. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with your own children, Lord, until you come. In Jesus' name, amen. We'd like to thank everyone for participating, and we hope that you have been blessed. Just a reminder to Riverside Baptized members, you have a short meeting after the church. Thank you very much. Bye.